Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the deal. Hey, uh, listen, we're gonna, this is going to be part two of Saints. Somebody asked me to do a study on the Saints, and, you know, you think, oh, it's only going to take an hour, you know, and then it, you look, start looking into it, and you realize mm, it's going to be a multi-part series. But who are the Saints? The saints are those that are, I believe that they're Israel and those that are beloved of the Lord. I mean, Daniel was told by, uh, I think it was Gabriel, um, that he, uh, he was greatly beloved or beloved. Yeah. Of course, Daniel uh, prayed I think three times a day, something my prayer life does not match for sure. But uh, the thing is with the Bible is it's like a cloth, a woven cloth. You know, you go to one thread and that thread connects to so many other threads that connect to other threads that connect to other threads. And yeah, it's, it's, it's really amazing. And, you know, people just don't, uh, they, oh, they say, oh, well, that, you know, the Bible was written by evil men to control us. Yeah. Yeah. Evil men doesn't want us to steal and uh, doesn't want us to murder people and cheat on our wives and cheat with their ne your neighbor's wife and, you know, horrible things like that, right? Uh, yeah. And then they'll tell you that Jesus was uh created by the roman government and he was a fiction and all this kind of garbage now let's face it rome was in charge during the days of christ because god the father wanted rome in charge um you know there was a uh, when you read the book of judges when the people were evil god sent evil people against them, persecutors. And when the people were righteous, they lived in peace. Now, it's just the way it is. I mean, it's a familiar theme. And um, God is allowing the most evil, wicked people in the world to rule over the West now because we have forgotten and forsaken the Lord and uh, that's just the way it is. I mean, the book of Daniel. Uh, Jerusalem had gotten, had been so evil. I mean, all you got to do is read Isaiah and Ezekiel. And uh, I mean, they, they were just, they were, they were totally evil into Satanism and murder and, you know, a bad, really bad. So God said, okay. You don't want to follow me by my rules, the Lord says. You don't want to follow me by my rules. You don't want me for a king. I'm going to give you into the hand of the king of Babylon and see how you like it. And you're going to be there for 70 years. Yeah. Well, you know, what do you think the New World Order is? It's punishment from the Lord. I mean... <laughs> You know, all these pre-trib rapture people think they're going to fly out of here any second. They're, they're, they're lukewarm faith. You know, God blinds people. He, he does. He will blind people when they love their sin and when they love their worldly things, including their lives, more than they love him. When you love the Lord more than anything else and you want him more than anything else, you will find him and he will find you. But if you want the things of this world, that's scary. When the Lord gives you all the things of this world that your heart desires, that's scary, people. It really is. You know, I've been homeless uh, at least twice that I can remember. Um, and I was working a full-time job and got hurt and 
the the uh, company I was working for. I mean, I I got hurt when I was working, and really there wasn't a reason, a good reason why I was hurt. My back just gave out. Of course, I did a radio show on Halloween Satanism and the occult, and uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, it was a satanic attack, I'm sure it was. And uh, I couldn't work. And the company, you know, I, I said, well, you know, my back was hurting when I was at work. And they says, oh, well, uh, you know, you, I applied for disability and they said, oh, it's a worker's comp case. So I applied for worker's comp and they says, no, no, this is a disability case. Well, they were self-insured and they didn't want to pay me anything. So, I went, uh, you know, a long time without any paycheck coming in. So I slept in my car. I was blessed enough to have a car. Well, a truck. And, you know, you learn a valuable lesson. You learn who your friends are when you're really down. You know, I moved up to Tennessee to be part of a church. And um, as soon as I wasn't bringing in money to throw at them in the collection plate um they didn't they didn't care anything they didn't care i was sleeping in my car in the winter 17 degrees outside in the cold and they didn't care but boy they sure loved you know love your brother when you're put throwing that money in that collection plate love your brother yeah right but i realized it was all from the lord the lord was showing me things and uh boy he's given me quite an education um yeah yeah sometimes uh school of hard knocks is not a lesson you want to learn and um uh, but uh still learning <laughs> yeah all right well let's go to daniel chapter seven we're we're doing the uh this is part two of the saints series but the saints are you know god's people period that's who they are they're not the satanic seed line and yes there is people there is a satanic seed line on this earth uh like i say read genesis 6 uh with job 38 you know believing men don't marry unbelieving women and have giants for children with six fingers and six toes that God says, go into the land and kill them all. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You know, that's why they hope that you'll never read the Bible from cover to cover. The enemy. And uh, I once heard it said that uh, the two greatest enemies, well, the three greatest enemies that the uh, true remnant believing church has is one, so-called Christian bookstores with their filled with fake garbage, you know. Uh, I mean, when you find out that the largest publisher of Bibles in the English-speaking world, their parent company prints the Satanic Bible, I mean, you know, oh, uh, well, you know, they wouldn't change the Bible. They're just selling that to make money. Oh, really? So you really want to believe that the uh, largest printer of Bibles in the English-speaking world is owned by a company that prints satanic literature and they're just, you know, in it for the money? No, they're Satanists. And they're the ones printing all these modern Bibles that turn Jesus into a sinner and uh, just a mere person. And yeah. <laughs> all right, so... Christian bookstores, so-called. Uh, television. Television is filth. Let's face it. I mean, what is it full of? Sex, violence, uh, vampires, witches, you know, uh, magic. I mean, I'm, I was into the New Age for a while, very briefly, and... Um, I used to go to the New Age bookstore, and they had a special section in the back, a special room with hardcore Satanism. And that was about the time 
somebody witnessed to me the, the true gospel, and uh, I kind of like looked at it all and, you know, <laughs> boy, did I get an education, you know. But the New Age was tied in with Satanism, you know, magic, witchcraft. And if people are foolish enough to get involved in that stuff, well, you know, they can serve their master, which is the devil, you know. And there's actually people that believe that there's good witches fighting bad witches. Uh, the Bible says to kill witches. Don't matter. Kill them all. Good, bad. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, Clint Eastwood reference there. But uh, so television's filth. And, and you really think that television is going to allow TBN and all this filth on, you know. You think television's filth six days and three quarters in a week is filth and then on sunday morning it's good wholesome christian praise and worship i don't think so no television is garbage and then uh let's see so uh bookstores television and the third most dangerous thing is 501c3 businesses with the name church in it what is 501c3 uh it is the irs uh regulation or rule where a an incorp a corporation a business a state chartered business applies for tax exemption so i can you know go and i can go to the state of florida the department division of corporations Department of State and apply for a business license. Oh, let's call it uh, First Baptist Church of uh, Hell. You know, First Baptist Church of Hell. You you pay your whatever it is hundred something dollars get a corp a business license. You know, uh, I mean just because. You call, you know, it's called Federal Express, Fed, FedEx. Is it part of the federal government? No. No, it's not. But uh, you call it First Baptist Church. Well, that's the name of your business. Your business has the name church in it. Okay. And then you take that and then you apply to the IRS for tax exemption. And they have a whole list of rules that you have to go by if you want to keep your tax exemption. One of those is you can't go against public policy. So when the government says that there's 12 or 14 or 33 different genders, well, you can't say, well, thus saith the Lord, God made a male and female. No, no, you can't, you can't talk about that. Um, you can't get involved in politics. When the government says abortion on demand, oh, well, we can't talk about that. You know, that's against public policy. Um, when the government says that um, two men can be in a relationship with the government, a government contract called a uh, license, you know, marriage, um, you cannot quote the book of Leviticus where it calls something an abomination. No, you can't do that if you want to keep your tax-exempt status. So that's a 501c3. And there's other things too. You know, if you've got a candidate that's truly a believer in a political race and then you've got an antichrist that believes in... Um, abortion and everything else uh, you cannot tell them hey vote for the Christian guy you can't do that it's against the law well against their rules or whatever and the government will come in and say oh we're yanking your tax exemption so you know the last seven years that you've uh, collected money from the government 
for I mean you've collected money from tie whatever tithes they call it or the collection plate you're gonna have to pay taxes on all of it plus penalties plus interest uh, and then by the time you know it the pastor that dared to speak out is in prison for tax fraud yeah it's happened it's happened that's what a 501 c3 is and your church so-called is not chartered from the lord it's chartered from the state the government gives you the charter so so-called christian bookstores so-called christian television and so-called christian churches and no i'm not a 501 c3 i don't i'm not part of that mess so i'm a volunteer and a few of you send me a donation here and there i appreciate it thank you but you know what i got a full-time job you probably need your money worse than i do you know but those of you that have helped me in the past i appreciate it very very much there was a rough spot there that i had for a little while but lord sees through it and you know when i was homeless up up in tennessee you know i never i never went hungry i mean even though i had no job and no money coming in for some reason i never went hungry the lord always took care of me so you know and i honestly believe that uh, during the tribulation in Revelation 12, the church is going to go into the wilderness to escape the beast. And it'll be just like when God took uh, Israel out of Egypt. And he gave them water and he gave them manna. And their clothing never wore out. Can you imagine that? They wandered for 40 years in the desert and their clothes never wore out. Yeah, think about that. So... Um, Wow, oh, almost 15, over 15 minutes, and I'm still haven't even started this Bible study. So, all right, let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 7. You know, we're, uh, if you want to fight the devil, get on your hands and knees and repent and pray to the Lord and ask him to forgive you. Um, I mean, this is, you know, you're not going to grab a rifle and beat the devil. You can't kill the devil with a rifle. So I'd rather have the Lord as king. And uh, there was times when the Lord threw down uh, hail from heaven. The weight of a talent. Talent's 70 pounds. It's about 32 kilograms. Can you imagine a piece of ice falling on somebody's head that weighs about 70 pounds, 32 kilograms, 30 kilograms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that beats, uh, yeah, you get the idea. So Daniel chapter seven. All right. So King Nebuchadnezzar, um, Let's see, Nebuchadnezzar dies and Belshazzar is his son, is now the ruler. So here it is, Daniel's been in Babylon for a long time. He's, he's old. And uh, I mean, you're talking around 70 years. Daniel might be 85, 90 years old. I don't know how old he was when he was taken to Babylon, but he was probably very young. You know, he, he might have been a teen. But uh, let's, let's go read Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven 
strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts, now keep in mind, when the Bible's talking about the beast, you're talking about a figure of speech, okay? I mean, these are not, uh, the stupid watchtower, Jehovah's Witnesses will, when they cover material like this, they'll have a picture of a, a lion with eagle's wings, and that's, you know, that's their stupidity. Or, you know, uh, Adam and Eve naked underneath a, an apple tree with a snake hanging down. You know, that's the kind of stupidity that they have. Um, the Bible calls the, uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. He's also called the beast, but he's a man. Okay. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. And that was verse three. What is the sea? Let's take a look. All right, let's go read verse four. Uh, we're going to keep reading to, to verse eight, and then we're going to go to Revelation uh, 13. You know, the King James Bible will interpret the Bible if you let it. The modern Bibles will change the words so that you don't make the connection. When the Bible uses a phrase and you look up that phrase in other parts of the Bible, it will explain itself from the context. But uh, the modern Bibles will change everything. So, you know, for example, instead of saying the beast, they might say creature. So it's beast in one spot, but it's a creature in another. And you don't make the connection. So it's lost on you. Throw away your modern Bible. Get yourself a King James. And they're even changing the King James now. So uh, there's a company called, uh, well, not a company, but a, a group called Bible Protector. And they use the Cambridge edition of the King James. You could download it and uh, print your own, actually. So... All right, so let's keep reading Daniel, and then we're going to go to Revelation 13, because they are, they're connected. Now, remember, this, he's looking at the, um, he's looking into, Daniel's seeing the future, okay? And four great beasts came up from the sea, keep that in mind, the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the earth as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Hmm. Now remember, Christ is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, John the Baptist said that, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Is Jesus a, a lion or is he a lamb? No, it's a figure of speech, people. And behold, verse 5, and behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. Now, I don't know if this has any relevance, but uh, what is the symbol of communist Russia? A bear. Yeah. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side. I wonder if that was the left side you know the communists always call themselves the left and it raised itself up on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it and they said thus unto it arise devour much flesh uh communism under stalin was considered the second uh well Second of the of the people murdered under communism, he was probably second uh, for the just sheer mass numbers of people murdered. Uh, Mao, Chairman Mao of China, probably wins first place, my opinion. But Stalin was the second. 
even if everything they say about Hitler was true, Hitler was a distant third. I mean, Stalin murdered millions. People have no idea how many Christian Christians were murdered under communism uh, in Russia and Ukraine. No idea. I mean, they didn't keep records. But uh, the few people that escaped told tales of horror. Absolutely tales of horror. So, arise, devour much flesh. Well, that's what the, the bear did. If, if my interpretation is correct. I don't know. Verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another, this is number three, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, um, this is supposed to be the end time beast, which is yet to come, which I believe is getting ready to show itself. I think this is the fourth kingdom upon the earth. And I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceeding, and it had great iron teeth. Um, I don't know if you know it, but the first time iron is mentioned in the Bible, it's associated with the children of Cain, who used it for metallurgy. Uh, according to the um, Japanese, who've been making steel swords for centuries, They were. Uh, they said that they were taught how to make steel swords by the gods that came down from heaven, which would tie in with the Book of Enoch that uh, the fallen angels taught mankind about uh, magic and witchcraft and potions, you know, um, poisons and what have you, magic potions, you know, witches brew and how to work with metals. You know, you take iron and mix it with carbon and it turns into steel. And from what I understand, steel is 10 times stronger than iron. You ever have a cast iron skillet and a, and a steel skillet? The iron skillet, you drop it on a rock, it'll break. The steel skillet will bounce. It might have a, a dent but and it's a lot lighter and it's a lot stronger is it true i don't know but it seems to um everything seems to tie in together you know which is why i'm you know i don't really teach from the book of enoch i mean parts of it look like it lines up but then there's other parts that i'm like yeah i don't know it just doesn't seem right but I don't know. But it, great iron teeth. And the uh, children of Cain were the first ones in the Bible to play with metals. And by the way, when you look in the Bible, the uh, I think it was the Philistines had iron um, war, weapons of war, like swords and spears. And Israel didn't have that. So that gave them, that gave the Philistines on a physical level a um, an advantage. So, you know, it's kind of hard to chop down a tree with a, with a piece of wood, you know. You wanted to have an, uh, an axe head. And what do you make an axe head out of? Steel. You know, iron, steel. Yeah. So, all right. So, 
a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth that devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse. It was different. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now, horns are representative of rulership and government, you know, like kings. Now, you can, um, you know, it's funny. What did the Vikings used to wear on their helmets? Horns, right? I'm just throwing that out there. Um, so you can either follow the horn of the devil. Oh, isn't it funny? They always show the devil with horns, right? He's red with horns and a tail and yeah. But uh, what about the horn? Well, in 2 Samuel 22 and verse 3, it says, The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield. And what does a shield do? It protects us from the uh, arrows and sword of the enemy. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower and my refuge, my Savior, thou savest me from violence. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation. Obviously, they're talking about Christ here. Zacharias was the father of John the Baptist. He was a priest. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. In Psalms 18, 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Did I make the point clear? Yeah, I, I think so. So, this beast was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had... Ten horns. Verse 8. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before, her, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. And I believe... This horn is the false prophet. That's my guess. But what do I know? All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 13. Because this is... Uh, Daniel ties into Revelation 13, big time, my opinion. John, St. John the Divine, they call him. Not John the Baptist, the other John, the Apostle John. According to legend, they tried to kill him. Um, and they couldn't do it. John was called uh, Beloved of the Lord. They tried to kill him. I heard they tried to cut, cut his head off, They uh, boiling oil, or, you know. They couldn't kill him. So they banished him to the Isle of Patmos. You know, when you're on an island, 
far out to sea and you don't have a ship or a boat, it's kind of hard to leave, you know? They didn't want him preaching. And do you know that the uh, the council, they had a they had a council, a church council, you know, all the different churches from in the different cities held a council and decided, you know, what books belong in the Bible and which don't. And the church that was at Laodicea voted against the book of Revelation. They said, we don't like that book. Well, duh, because it condemned it. John, uh, the Lord condemned Laodicea in, uh, I forget if it was chapter one, two, or three, but uh, they didn't like, they, Laodicea didn't like Revelation, but God doesn't care. You know, whether you like it or not, here I come. All right, Revelation 13, verse one. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, there's that sea again. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns. What does a what does a king wear? Wears a crown, right? And upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So this beast combined the characteristics of the leopard, the bear, the lion, I mean, Christ is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And this beast has the mouth as a mouth of a lion. So he's going to speak like he's the Messiah or the Christ. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So who? what is this dragon? What do you mean a dragon? Now, if you uh, go to my channel... And uh, to the top right-hand side, there's a little like magnifying glass. It's a search thing. Type in Revelation 12. I have an entire uh, commentary on this chapter. I think Revelation 12 is very important for the end times. I mean, very, very important. I mean, there's just, I could do these for hours because everything ties into each other. All right, so Revelation chapter 1, 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And this is directly from the book of Genesis. Uh, Joseph had a dream. And I cover that in my commentary on Revelation 12. So, and who's the woman? The woman's Israel, the church. But indirectly, uh, Mary. Verse 2, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Um, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, there's that dragon again, having seven heads and ten horns and ten crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. I did a Bible study on stars. Sometimes they're lights up in the sky, and other times they're angels. Yeah. So his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Um... Uh, you could say uh, Cain and Abel. You could say uh, Jesus when Joseph was told to flee Bethlehem and go into Egypt. And then Herod murdered all the children that were under, what, two years old in Bethlehem? Yeah. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And who's that? That's Christ. 
and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman, the church, boy, pre-tribbers don't love, they don't like this. They, they don't believe, see, pre-tribbers don't believe the Bible. They really don't. And the woman, Israel, the church, fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's about 42 months, people. And there was, past tense, and there was war in heaven. I believe this war in heaven happened somewhere between Revelation, I mean, I'm sorry, Genesis 2 and Genesis 3. Because the, in Genesis, God said he created everything in it and looked, looked at it and it was good. And that's my the Bob paraphrase. But he looked at everything and it was good. Other people will say that this is the future. But Jesus said, I behold Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And that was roughly 2,000 years ago, about. So if this is future, how could, you know, uh, you know, you got to realize God is not uh, bound to time like we are. He's the future, the present, the past. He's all these things. God talks about things that haven't happened yet as if they already are. He told Abraham, you're going to have a child in your old age. Sarah will give you a child, and she's like 90 years old. It hadn't happened yet, but it, but it did. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. The dragon didn't prevail, and his place wasn't found in heaven anymore. Verse 8. Let's go to verse 9. Who is this dragon? The Bible tells you who the dragon is. And the great dragon was cast out. Cast out of where? The out of heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Oh, wait a minute. The old serpent. Why would, uh, why would the Bible call him an old serpent? Oh, wait a minute. Adam and Eve in the garden. Eve was talking to the serpent, remember? But the church will have you thinking, oh, it's a talking snake. Uh, I don't think so. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. What? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. I've actually had people tell me the devil and Satan are two different beings. But the Bible says they're the same. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels, the stars, were cast out with him. Whoa. Oh, yeah. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. And they, who's they? The saints. These are the saints, people. We ain't talking about a New Orleans football team. And they overcame him, Satan, the devil, the dragon, the serpent. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And who's the lamb? Christ, the lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. John the Baptist said, Behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Tell that to the pre-trivers. Ooh, God would never make us suffer. We're the church. He loves us. 
We're, God's not a wife beater. No, God's not a wife beater, but Satan is. Satan will be more than happy to beat up God's wife, the bride, the church. And they, the saints, overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. There's that sea again. What is the sea? Well, we're going to find out in a minute. Um, let's see. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. He's mad. He's angry. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. And I did a Bible series on eagle's wings. Because God said that when he took Israel out of Egypt into the wilderness, that he took them out on the wings of a great eagle. So, Revelation is tying into the same language as the Exodus, the book of Exodus. When Israel left Egypt, the Bible explains the Bible, if you'll let it. Throw that modern Bible in the garbage, burn it, because it's filth. It's probably printed by the company that prints the Satanic Bible. Modern Bibles are Satanic Bibles. Do you know the complete Jewish Bible turns, it, it, the, 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 the Bible of the so-called Messianic Jews by David Stern? Do you know that that Bible turns Jesus into Lucifer? Yeah, it does. They turn Jesus into Lucifer. Don't believe me? Look it up. They, they, uh, Jesus in Revelation 22 says he's the morning star. In Revelation, in Isaiah 14, the guy that fell from heaven that we just read about that was kicked out of heaven, he's called the morning star. So they take Lucifer and turn him into the morning star. So they're basically telling you Christ is the devil. And this is a messianic Bible by messianic you-know-whos. Yeah, right. And then they, and then you have these same people telling me, Yeshua HaMashiach. No, his name is Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, that's a year, and times, that's two more years, and half a time from the face of the serpent. So that's one plus two, which is three and a half, three and a half years from the face of the serpent. What's three and a half years? 42 months, 1200 and whatever, 60, 90 days, whatever they call it. The Bible tells you, they give it to you in days, months, and years. The Great Tribulation is going to be about three and a half years of utter hell on earth that pre-tribbers don't think they're, they're going to have to see. Boy, they're going to be shocked. Verse 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water, water as a flood after the woman. I got a Bible study called The Flood of the Dragon. Guess what, people? We're in this flood right now. But the flood waters are still rising. They're rising. They're coming up. And the serpent, the devil, cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. 
All right, let's see. So, the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now, we're going to show you what the water is. Now, verse 16 is a prophecy. It has yet to happen. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, if you read, uh, there were a couple of people that... Uh, confronted Moses and they questioned his leadership. Actually, they were trying to horn in on his leadership there. And uh, God decided, oh, you don't want to follow my servant Moses? And you think you can do a better job? Well, I got a solution to that problem. And the Bible says the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and closed upon them. Yeah. Let's take a look. Uh, the first time opened her mouth appears as a phrase is in Genesis 4.11 and is in reference to when Cain killed Abel. And God says, and now, Genesis 4.11, and now art thou cursed from the earth which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. All right, let's go to Numbers chapter 16. Uh, boy, I, these studies just keep getting longer and longer. Number 16. Now, Moses had led the children of Israel out of Egypt and you got some people here that are challenging his leadership uh, in other words they want to be they want to be the big kahuna the big cheese the top dog they want to be the leaders uh, you know we don't want to follow you Moses why we're just as good as you are number 16 verse 1 now Korah the son of Izhar and the, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, and the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. So here it is. They're, they're going against Moses. You know, and here it is. God picked Moses. So, you know, if you're going against somebody that God picked, you're going against God. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you. Oh yeah, you're you guys are, you know, you're, you're taking too much power here. You guys are ruling, running the ship. No, 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 no. You guys are taking too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. Oh, yeah, we're a holy congregation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're uh, just like the Pharisees of old. You guys thought you were holy, huh? Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Yeah, who's making you the chief ruler here? You're going to lift yourself up? And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. You know, the Bible records that Moses was a meek man. He wasn't a proud boaster. You know, when, when God, you know, that's one of the reasons God liked Moses. Moses fell upon his face. He knew what was coming. And he, Moses, spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, 
Even tomorrow the Lord will show you who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen, he will cause to come near unto him. See, he's telling them, okay, you guys want to be near the Lord? Uh, go for it. The Lord's going to show you who's going to come near to him, who he's chosen. This do, take your censors, Korah, and all his company. Um, censors, you know, the, I guess you could say uh, incense. You know, that's what it was, incense. You know, holy smoke, basically. Take your censors and put fire therein and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. Now remember, Levi was the um, the priest tribe. They were the ones to serve. The Lord said Levi would be the tribe that would serve him in the tabernacle and later the temple. Verse 8, And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the Lord of God hath separated you from the congregation of Israel? to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also? For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey? And they're talking about Egypt. Yeah, you know, it's just a little tiny thing that you took us from a land which had milk and honey and food and water and, and delicious dainty foods and stuff. But now, to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. So you brought us out of Egypt where we had food, but here now you want to bring us into the wilderness where there's nothing, there's no water, there's no food, and you want to kill us in the wilderness? And, and you want to make yourself a prince? You want to make yourself the king? Moses? Moses? Moreover, thou hast not, uh, verse 14, Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Yeah, you're asking us to, to come for a meeting here, and we're not going to bother with you. And Moses was very wroth. He was mad. And said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. You know, I haven't taken any, not one of their animals, and I didn't hurt these people. And Moses said unto Korah, But thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow, to take every man his censer and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers, thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man a censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. Now people, if you ever hear the uh, devil's children talking about the she kinda, the Shekinah, S H E K I N A H, S H E, she kinda. They're not talking about the glory of the Lord. I mean, they'll tell you it's the glory of the Lord, but what they're talking about is the goddess of heaven, the queen of heaven in Jeremiah, I think chapter 44, if I remember correctly. The Shekinah, the queen of heaven. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. So, all the, uh, if you want to read about the, the fate of Korah, you could also read the book of Jude. Um, 
All right, so Korah, the ringleader here, gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation. Get away from them, that I may consume them in a moment. Ooh. And they fell upon their faces and said, Moses and Aaron, O oh God, the, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. Showtime, people. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. You know, I didn't come up with this in my own brain. The Lord sent me to do this. Verse 29. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertaineth unto them. And they go down quick into the pit. They go down quick into the pit. Then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave asunder that was under them and the earth opened her mouth. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished. They perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them for they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Oof. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hollowed. The censers of these sinners against their own souls let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offered them before the Lord. Therefore, they are hollowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. Wow. So, what is this? Um, uh, you know, what is this stuff? The earth opened her mouth. Well, it was like an earthquake, people. The ground split in two and they fell in. And then the earth closed back together. They died. All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter 12. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Water. What is this water? We're going to find out in a minute. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. All right, what are these waters? What, what are they talking about? Well, the answer to that is in Revelation chapter 17. So let's read verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, the great whore, 
that sitteth upon many waters. How do you sit on water? You don't. You don't sit on many waters, right? It's a figure of speech, people. Well, you want an interpretation of the waters? Revelation 17 and verse 15. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, the waters which thou sawest, the waters that you saw, where the whore sits, sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. It's the sea of humanity, people. Yeah, sometimes it's talking about, you know, liquid H2O. But when the, sometimes the Bible's talking about people and multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters where the horse sits are people and nations and tongues. Yeah. Revelation 12, 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Ah, do you, do you ever wonder why the heathen aliens are flooding the Western world, Europe and the United States? You ever wondered why? It's the fulfillment of this prophecy. The flood of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. People, do you know that all the major cities in the United States are built on a fault line? All of them. Yeah. And where do the, where do the satanic heathens live? Cities? Yeah. There's going to come a day... When there's going to be a massive earthquake and it's going to swallow up a lot of the flood. Maybe not all of it, but uh, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth. He was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Oh, but the pre-tribbers, they're not going to be here. They're going to fly away. We we're flying away. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. If you have the testimony of Jesus and you don't keep the commandments, the dragon doesn't care. Or if you keep the commandments, but you don't have the testimony of Jesus, the dragon doesn't care. The dragon doesn't care. And what commandments? Well, let's let's look. Instead of going to Moses, let's let's go to Jesus. Matthew chapter twenty-two. But uh, verse thirty-four. But when the Pharisees had heard that he Jesus had put the Sadducees to silence. They were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, you know, a doctor of the law, not a lawyer like we have today. I mean, there was a time when United States lawyers were taught Bible law, but that was before the Antichrist infiltrated all our institutions and changed everything. You know, Harvard and Yale you know Harvard and Yale were Bible colleges originally? Yeah. Yeah, they were Bible colleges. Now Harvard has an elective on uh, a class on anal sex. Uh, I don't think a Bible college should have a class on anal sex. Uh, what do you think? So, yeah, I wonder how you get extra credit in that class. Uh, I don't even want to think about it. So, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him, Jesus, a question, tempting him and saying, he's trying to trick Jesus. Well, I tell you what, you ask a question trying to trick Jesus, you usually end up eating crow. Well, what we call eating crow. 
Yeah. It, 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 it always backfires on you. He says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So when you hear all these Torah keepers uh, telling you, Oh, you got to keep all the laws. Fine. When are they going to go to San Francisco and start uh, stoning to death the inhabitants there? Uh, uh, oh, wait. No, 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 no. Uh, they don't want to do that. You know, but that's part of the law. But they don't want to do that. They won't talk about that. No, they want you to keep a Sabbath. No, no. Let, let's keep all the law. Let's go down to San Francisco and uh, throw some rocks. What do you What do you say? What do you say? I mean, I'd be I'd be game. You know. Yeah. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. And hopefully, you don't live next door to a bunch of Satanists, because I don't want to love them. So, all right, where uh, where were we? Revelation 13. All right, let's go back to Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, the sea of humanity, people, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of the name of blasphemy. Isn't this what we read in Daniel 7? And we're not done with Daniel 7 yet. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. What does it mean the seat? The throne. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? People, the beast has a number of names. He's called the man of sin, the son of perdition. The first person called the son of perdition was Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Christ. And let's see, the, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist and the beast. Same entity, my opinion. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Three and a half years, people. 1260 days, or I think it is 1290 days. This is, the, this is the great tribulation, period. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and, dwell, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Hmm. God's going to allow them to... God's going to allow him to make war with the saints. Huh. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Wow. Tell this to the pre-tribbers. They're not going to be here for this. So they think. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life 
of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Are your name, is your name written in the book of life of the Lamb? If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. My opinion, the interpretation of this is if you are called to die for faith in Jesus Christ, you are to go willingly. That is my guess. If they want to kill you because you're white or just plain violence, well, Jesus said, he that hath no sword, sell his coat and buy one or sell his cloak and buy one. Yeah. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Those that keep the two commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ is my guess. So, all right, verse 11 of Revelation chapter 13. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. He's trying to look like the Lamb of God. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Listen to this, people. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Hmm. Who was the first one that had fire come down from heaven onto the earth. Uh, Elijah comes to mind. What do you want to guess that the false prophet that's going to be able to do miracles is going to claim to be Elijah the prophet? And there's going to be God's two witnesses one of which will be Elijah that will confront the beast and the false prophet. You're probably going to see two, fall, uh, two Elijahs running, well, two claiming to be Elijah running around. Yeah. Who's the real Elijah? Verse 13, Revelation 13, 13. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. If you don't think uh, Satan has powers, read Job chapter 1. Of course, Satan's on a leash. God has him on a leash. You know, and as far as God will let him go on that leash, he has power to do. Read Job chapter 1. Really? Stop right now. Read Job chapter 1. Where God, uh, you know, Satan made a bet with God saying, you know, uh, yeah, you think uh, Job is so great? Let me... Uh, Touch everything he's got. Let me destroy everything in his life. And he'll curse you to his face. And God said, okay. Uh, just, you can't kill him. Everything else you could do, but don't kill him. And uh, Job's wife said, why don't you curse God and die? You know, Satan didn't go after his wife because his wife already seemed to be doing what Satan wanted uh, Job to do. You know, so I, you know, seriously, people. Uh, but uh, Job, Job, uh, his family was restored. I believe that his children were actually brought back to life, resurrected. I, I, I believe that. 
And some Bible scholars believe that uh, Job is the oldest book in the Bible. And I believe that too. I didn't for a while, but after looking at the evidence, I think Job was the first book uh, written down. So, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And by the way, Satan did that too in Job. Verse 14, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image, an image, an idol, an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The image of the beast. Every time I turn on the TV, I think about this. Well, maybe not every time, but quite often. Verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, a mark of ownership, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let, he that ha let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Six hundred and sixty-six. What day was the uh, man created on? Adam? Sixth day, I believe. So, all right, back to Daniel. Let's go back to Daniel. All right, let's go to Daniel 7. Uh, I guess we'll read 7-7. Seven, seven. After this I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Who's this Ancient of Days? I believe that's Christ. Whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Garment as white as snow. Hmm. All right. And who, who's this? Who is this talking about? The ancient of days. Well, I think it's Revelation chapter one, verse twelve. And I turned to see the voice that spake unto me, that spoke with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Jesus called himself the Son of Man often one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire uh have you ever looked at a a gas stove. What color is the flame? Blue. Yeah. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Hmm. In Revelation 3, 5, Jesus said, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, white clothing. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, 
But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Revelation 6, 11, And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. See, this is the... Uh, the dragon wrath. Didn't we read that in Revelation 12 or 13? I forget which one, but you know, the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the uh, commandments and the testimony of his name. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, they're going to be killed. Tell that to the pre-tribbers. Oh, God would never allow that. We're super special. We're, a, we're so much better than the old church and the millions of people that died under communism and, and in the days of Rome. Why, we're better than they are. God would never do that to us. No. Revelation 7, 9. And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. When Jesus uh, rode into Jerusalem on the colt of an ass, what did they put on the street? Palms. Palm leaves. Yeah. 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 All right, let's go back to... Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Verse 9. Revelation, Daniel 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. The thrones of the beast, the devil. And the ancients, ancient of days did sit. See, Christ taking his throne whose garment was white as snow and the hairs of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. You want to read about this throne? Go, go to Ezekiel chapter 1. Read it on your own. I mean, this Bible study is already an hour and a half, and I'm not even through yet. Verse 10 a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Oh yeah, a fiery stream. Where do I read about that? You know, in the days of Noah and the flood, uh, God used water. But he made a promise to God. Uh, God made a promise to Noah, no more flood, well, of the whole earth. But the next time is going to be fire. Remember I told you that uh, about fire coming down from heaven in Job? Job chapter 1 and verse 16. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God, from Satan really, the fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. See, Satan has power that God allows them to have. In 2 Peter chapter 3, in verse 10, we read, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are in therein shall be burned up. Oh yeah, people. Fire. Uh, let's see. Daniel 7.10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, 
and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Uh, multiply 10,000 times 10,000. Tell me how, how much that is. They stood before him and judgment was set and the books were opened. The book of life and the book of damnation. Verse 11. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain. The beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Uh, where is that in the Bible? Is there another second witness? Well, Revelation 17, 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her, burn her with fire. Uh, I believe this ties into Revelation chapter uh, 20, which is, you know, when Christ the King uh, rules on the earth. Revelation 20 and verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Um, what is the purpose of the, what they call the millennium? Milli, uh, perhaps you've heard of millimeter, which is one thousandth of a meter. meter uh, it's a Latin word, it means thousand. So they call it the millennium. And uh, some people will say, well, you know, Latin's bad because it's tied in with the Vatican and the Roman Catholics and blah, blah, blah. But you know what, people? Um, the English language is approximately 20% from Latin. I mean, it's just, you know, it, m millennium just means, uh, has reference to thousand. There's going to be a thousand years of peace on this earth with no Satan. He's going to be bound. What is the purpose of this millennium? Well, what about all the children that died in childbirth or were aborted or died when they were very young for whatever reason, disease or whatever? Uh, when my dad, who grew up during the Depression, uh, went to elementary school, he told me a story that one of the teachers said, uh, look around because one person out of four that's in this elementary school class will not be here by the time high school graduation rolls around because approximately 25% of the people were dying of pneumonia. Yeah, pneumonia was a bad, <laughs> really bad uh, until antibiotics came out. So, you know, something to think about. Uh, but I think the thousand year millennium, uh, well, the thing is, I've got a study on this too, if you're interested, but I forget what book it is. I think it's in Isaiah. It talks about children in the kingdom, a little child with playing at the snake's hole and uh, the poisonous asp and it's not gonna hurt them. And the lion's gonna be eating straw like the ox. But there's going to be little children. But Jesus said that in the resurrection, uh, we neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels in heaven. So if believers are not having children in the kingdom, where are these children coming from? I think abortions. I think they're going to be given a chance to grow up in the thousand years reign of Christ, uh, I'm hoping that I'll be counted worthy to teach some of these children. And um, at the end of the thousand years, Satan's going to be uh, released and go out and see if he can get uh, these people to follow him instead of 
the God of heaven and earth. So, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them, the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. You see, people, pre-tribbers will tell you that there's a resurrection before the first resurrection. Yeah. Oh, the pre-trib rapture, that's, the, that's before the, the first resurrection. That, uh, uh, you know, the Bible tells you that in this, in this series here, that until the last person who's killed for Jesus Christ in the tribulation, they're not going to be resurrected until the last person who dies for their faith, not taking the mark of the beast, not worshiping the beast, until the last person dies, there's not going to be the first resurrection. But the pre-tribbers, they don't believe, they don't believe the Bible. They don't. They actually do not believe the Bible. Because until the last person who dies for the faith happens, then there's the resurrection. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Pre-tribbers will tell you there's a resurrection before the first one. Verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, you know, they'll, uh, they'll tell you Gog and Magog is uh, the area around Russia, Poland, Ukraine, that area. Well, guess who, uh, who, guess who's from that area? The majority of people over in the Middle East, and I'm not talking about the Arabs. That's the area they're from. Yeah. Gog and Magog get together them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let's go to Daniel 7. Verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Oh yeah, the burning flame. Uh, hmm. Maybe we'll keep reading. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll read Daniel. Verse 12, 
As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away. What is dominion? It's where you get the word dominate. You know, they were in power. They It was their ruling and, you know. They had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like unto the one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. The clouds of heaven. Ooh, where do we read about the clouds of heaven? So what is this about the clouds? Well, I did a Bible study on the clouds. Mark 14, verse 61. Verse 60. And the high priest, this is the uh, trial of Jesus. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. Boy, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Ooh, doggy, the little day that'll be, huh? Here's another interesting thing. Revelation 1 and verse 7. Behold, he, Christ, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. You got a group of people called preterists, and they say that all the prophecy of the Bible was fulfilled in 70 AD, roughly almost 2,000 years ago. Uh, did Jesus come with the clouds? Did every eye see him? Did your eye see him? Mine didn't. So how could this be past? It has to be future, you know. And, and these people get away with this stuff because people won't read their Bible. That's the problem. How about Matthew 24, verse 30? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Has that happened? No. No, it hasn't happened. How about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15, 16, 17, and 18? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And we're not talking about people in a bed with a pillow. No, we're talking when they say asleep, they're talking about the dead. There's going to be a remnant of people alive when Christ returns in glory. They're never going to see death. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. You know, every pre-trib secret rapture happens with a shout, right? Hey, it's a pre-trib rapture! Run! Right. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Huh. Now, if people are being killed in the tribulation, how can the dead in Christ rise first? How can it happen before the tribulation? If everybody's resurrected up with Christ in the clouds and going back to heaven, and then there's still people on earth getting killed, for their faith and testimony of Jesus? So how can the dead in Christ rise first? They can't. No, the tribulation has to happen until the last person who dies for their faith happens. And when Christ returns, 
all the dead in Christ will rise first. And then the few remnant that are alive when Christ returns, that never see death, they'll be with them. But the dead in Christ shall rise first, which proves that the pre-trib rapture is a lie. And all the ministers that teach that are liars and false prophets. And the Bible tells you what to do with false prophets. And it involves stoning. And no, we're not talking about hash oil and, and, and uh, uh, Colombian gold. No. Or tie sticks. No. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. Daniel 7, 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like unto the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom. Uh, Christ, the king, is going to have a kingdom. And he's going to have dominion over the whole world, heaven and earth. And glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages, should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that shall not be destroyed. There you go. Revelation chapters, uh, I think, 19, 20, 21, 22. Verse 15, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. And I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But... The saints, the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. This is the end time beast, people. We have yet to see this beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that speak very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints." And prevailed against them. See, the church is going to fight the beast, and the beast is going to prevail. The beast is going to win, at least against our earthly, fleshy body. Even the two witnesses of the Lord, one of which will be Elijah. He's, they're going to die for three, I think, three and a half days. Yeah. Yeah. I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, and here's the interpretation, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth devour the whole earth and it shall tread it down and break it in pieces and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Huh. Are they going to change B.C. 
before Christ and A.D., Anno Domino, uh, Year of Our Lord. Maybe change it to uh, B.C.E., Before the Common Era, and C.E., The Common Era. You ever see that dating system used? If you ever see C.E. for a time, you know, a year, the year C.E., or B.C.E., you're looking at the dating system of the Antichrist, plural. Yeah, they don't like B.C., before Christ, and A.D., year of our Lord, Anno Domino. And what about these laws? Well, let's change the commandments to the Noahide laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E. So, and to think to change times and laws, and they the church, shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Three and a half years, people. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints, the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cog cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed to me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Oh, yeah. And that, people, is the end of saints... Part 2, Daniel chapter 7. You know, the Bible just runs, all the threads of doctrines just runs all over the place. It's scattered all over the place, you know. But Daniel, Daniel saw the end times, and it bothered him immensely. He knew it was going to be horrible. All these pre-tribbers have no idea What's getting ready to happen? You know, when I came to the Lord in late 89, by 90 and 91, I knew that I might be called to die for the faith. I've known this for, you know, over 30 years. I've known this. Just like, read the book of Acts. Read Romans, I mean, I'm sorry, Hebrews 11. You know, the, the faith chapter. People died for their faith Millions, millions of Christians died in co under communism in Russia uh, when uh, was from my then living father's lifetime. But pre-tribbers, oh no, God would never do that to us. We're special. Yeah, that's for the other guys. You know, read the Book of Acts. You know, they 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 took Peter and killed him. They took Stephen and killed him. Uh, you know, really? But they don't care. You know, I trust my preacher on TBN. You know, Benny Hinn, he's, yeah, you send him a donation and God will give you everything you want in this life. You know. Yeah, if you think TBN has uh, is teaching God's word, well, I feel for you. Maybe you should uh, turn off the TV and read the Bible instead. It would be time well spent. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, signing off.